Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Shaw Whiteboard Session and today we're going to be covering the topic of compounding. Compounding is a process that happens in all analog wireless systems in order to accommodate the limited dynamic range of FM radio. It gets its name from the fact that we're compressing the audio signal in the transmitter and then expanding it again in the receiver to achieve a full dynamic range of our audio signal. Low tier systems use what's known as fixed ratio compounding but once we get into the mid to high tier systems, we start using audio reference compounding. And today we're just gonna cover the differences between the two methodologies. The first type of compounding we're gonna cover is fixed ratio compounding. And in fixed ratio compounding, our audio signal is captured by the transmitter and then compressed by a fixed ratio, typically two to one. This is then coupled with an expansion in the receiver of one to two, restoring our original signal back to its full dynamic range. The downsides of using fixed ratio compounding are that it will compress the signal regardless of signal level. In low level signals, the noise floor of the radio signal starts to become apparent. Users of systems that employ fixed ratio compounding will notice this as a breathing or pumping effect. Audio reference compounding, on the other hand, is a level dependent compounding scheme. So it operates on the principle that it will only compress the signal if it's absolutely necessary. And this means that at low signal levels, you don't get any of those artifacts that you sometimes experience with fixed ratio compounding schemes. The way audio reference compounding works is it utilizes a soft knee type of compression, which brings the onset of compression on gradually, and it allows the wireless system to avoid compounding until it's absolutely necessary. The benefits of this are that you eliminate most of those low-level artifacts, there's a reduction in system distortion, and you improve the transient response and becomes a more transparent and natural sounding system. Lastly, for those of you that have seen our video comparing analog to digital wireless systems, you'll know that digital wireless doesn't utilize any compounding at all. And this is because in the transmitter of a digital wireless system, we're converting that audio signal to a digital bitstream. And because of this, the received signal is exactly the same as the signal that was transmitted. There's no need to compress it because we're just dealing with data. Thank you for watching this episode of the Shaw Whiteboard Sessions. To learn more about different wireless topics, please consider registering to attend one of our seminars. The link is at the end of this video. Thanks.